Okay, let's tell you about mineral resources. Minister Gwede Mandashe, he's not signed a European-funded memorandum of understanding on green energy. President Cyril Ramaphosa hosted European leaders where the deal was to be sealed. We're now joined by energy expert Chris Yelland to chat more on these developments. The story has since moved, Chris, because uh, Gwede Mandashe in the Free State was actually asked this question on why he did not sign. And this is what he said. Let's take a look. Listen. It had nothing to do with disagreement, it had nothing to do with defiance, it had nothing to do with not believing in renewables, it had only one reason. I don't get drugged to sign an MOU that I have not read. doesn't matter what it is. I don't do that. It's, it's, it's a culture on my part to read anything I sign. So if I'm not given that MOU to read, I will not sign it. Chris Yelland, what do you read into that statement? Yeah, look, I think um, it is a bit of firefighting uh, because I think already some significant uh, damage has been done uh, through the uh, messaging that came out yesterday in the media uh, in which um, uh, Minister Mantash sounded rather petulant in his reasons why he would not sign this document. Now, look, I accept that he, of course, before you sign any document, you have to read it. Uh, but one really does have to wonder why his department uh, did not uh, present the document to him uh, in good time uh, for him to familiarize his, himself with the document uh, to be in a position to, to sign it. I also find it very discomforting that these kind of statements should be made in the public domain. You know, if there are some problems and, and uh, he hasn't uh, had an opportunity to see the document uh, and review it before signing, I, I, I think this should not be aired as a sort of a public uh, petulant grievance. Uh, it comes across very badly. Um, uh, it should be dealt with Minister Mantaj, uh, but by the President and others uh, like the Minister of uh, forestry and fisheries that were involved, um, you know, in the, in the signing ceremony. Uh, but I just think the way it came across um, and the way um, it was put by Minister Mantashek didn't didn't read well to me. I guess um, we will try and get the relevant authorities from the relevant departments to talk us through typically how the process works. But um, on another matter of ESCOM, um, you've got that security contract and then you've got the acting head of security, Karen Pele, who's been placed on a precautionary suspension. There are also calls for Jan Oberholzer to follow. What should we understand about this, given where we are as a country? Well... I think we should understand that this is a very, very murky uh, field uh, and there is little clarity as to what is going on. In fact, there's a whole lot of behind the scenes spy versus spy activities, intelligence versus counterintelligence, security versus counter security. Misinformation is the order of the day. And um, one really finds it difficult to uh, know what is truth and what is fiction. Um, just because the head of security at Eskom has been suspended pending an investigation, uh, you know, uh, it, 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 this is not abnormal in the case of serious uh, allegations, including allegations that are complete misinformation. Um, you know, for a process to unfold properly, it may be wise to remove that person uh, from the uh, field of action um, in order to protect uh, the, the person herself as well as uh, the process. Um, and, you know, a person such as Jan Oberholzer has been subject to numerous investigations in the past over allegations of all kinds of impropriety, uh, racism and other issues. He's always uh, been cleared in the past. It's not necessary to say that, you know, he, won't be, you know, he will be cleared uh, this time around. Uh, you know, I'm not suggesting that. What I am suggesting is that uh, we should be very, very cautious in these circumstances. There are nefarious forces at work protecting revenue streams and interests 
uh, and and uh, uh, people who are in the security uh, part of Eskim are, 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 are typically targets, uh, you know, for misinformation. Uh, I don't know truth from fiction at this point, and I don't think the public do either, and I honestly don't believe the media do either. The media have been subject to serious misinformation at the, in the past. You only have to look at the Sunday Times and the SARS rogue unit uh, allegations, which did enormous damage to the media uh, in, in their uh, sort of uh, swallowing of some of this misinformation that was being put out. So my, my message is, my takeaway is to, ex to, uh, to, to uh, be extremely cautious in these circumstances uh, until uh, things become clearer. It's rather even more difficult when you try and speak to the relevant authorities and they're not available. Chris Yellen, thank you very much for your time.